Hi everyone, this video offers a walkthrough of the major additions to the main WP version 5. Cost Tracker and Dashboard Insights module, the new Time Tracker extension, and API backups, which has been expanded and is now a core feature. Let's start with a Cost Tracker walkthrough. A powerful tool designed to help you efficiently manage and track costs associated with your websites within the main WP dashboard. This tool provides a centralized view to monitor, add, and analyze expenses, making your cost management more streamlined and effective. First, let's navigate to the Cost Tracker Overview page. Here, you're presented with a table that provides a comprehensive summary of expenses with columns for the type of purchase, subscription or lifetime, product and license type, price, and purchase and renewal date. Adding a new cost is straightforward. From the Cost Tracker module, navigate to Add New. Let's create a sample entry. Let's give it a name and a product URL, which is optional. Let's say this is a subscription and not a lifetime purchase, and below we'll select yearly renewal frequency. Category can be a plugin, theme, hosting, service, or other. Let's select plugin. Here you can optionally enter the slug of a plugin for better detection by main WP dashboard. For license type, let's select a multi-site license, which means that the cost we enter below will be divided among the selected child sites. Below we enter the price, purchase date, payment method. Here we select the subscription status and optionally enter some notes about this cost. On the right, select the sites, tags, or clients. This cost is associated with and hit the save cost tracking item button. If you need to make changes to an item, no problem. Just head back to the overview Find the item and select Edit from the Ellipsis menu. The Edit page contains all the same fields as the Add New page. Deleting an item is just as easy. On the Overview page, simply select Delete from the Ellipsis menu. The Settings page is where you can customize your cost tracker experience. Here you can select your preferred currency, adjust the currency symbol position, set separators for thousands and decimals, and define decimal places. You can also add custom product types and payment methods. These custom entries will then become available in the drop-down menu on the Add New and Edit pages. The notification is part of the optional Cost Tracker Assistant extension. This powerful extension enhances your cost tracking experience with features like automated notifications for subscription renewals and streamlined cost tracking for plugins and themes. The notification feature, when enabled in the settings, will alert you via email when a subscription is about to expire, and you can also set how many days before the expiration to get notified. The second feature of the extension is automation. When installing a plugin or a theme via zip upload, at the last step of installation, you will have an option of adding tracking the cost of that item, thus speeding up the process of entering the information related to that plugin theme manually. Throughout the main WP dashboard, cost-related widgets provide quick insights into your expenses, whether on a site's overview page or within the Manage Clients and Manage Sites sections. These widgets and new columns offer a snapshot of costs tied to each client or site making it easier to monitor your financials at a glance. We hope this walkthrough has been informative and will help you make the most out of the main WP cost tracker. Managing your website costs has never been easier, thanks to this intuitive and powerful tool. Next up, the Dashboard Insights walkthrough. The module is accessible from the main navigation menu, so let's navigate to it and have a closer look. The main purpose of the module is to provide insight into your activity on the main WP dashboard. So you will find widgets for plugin and theme management, post and pages management, and many more. 
The Insights page also contains information about your connected child sites, such as site plugin status, WordPress and PHP version distribution, and others. At the top of the page, you will find extensive filtering options. So you are able to filter the data in the widgets below by date, specific site tags, clients, and users that made the changes. As we can see, Insights is entirely widgetized, so each widget can be resized, rearranged, or completely disabled. To choose which widget to show, click the Page Settings icon in the top right, choose the desired widget, and click Save Settings. Finally, the data from each individual widget can be quickly exported. Simply click on the three-line menu and then choose the desired format. SVG for a vector-based image format, PNG for a raster-based image format, and CSV for a text-based file format. Next up is the Time Tracker walkthrough. The Time Tracker extension allows users to track the work they do for their clients directly from their main WP dashboard. Let's break down how to set up and use the Time Tracker extension step by step. First, we'll start with buckets. To create buckets, which are essentially pools of hours with specific price tags for different services, navigate to Time Tracker Buckets. Click the Create Bucket button and fill in the details like the bucket title, bucket description, number of hours you want to allocate for this bucket, select the clients you wish to associate with this bucket, and set the hourly price. Remember the currency is defined in the settings, so you only need to enter the numeric value here. The buckets page is your go-to for managing these buckets, allowing you to see the most important information about this bucket at a glance, and in the ellipsis menu, you will find actions for viewing bucket details, editing bucket, and deleting a bucket. When deleting a bucket, you will be given an option to move track time to a different bucket. Now, let's move to the settings section. Here, you can adjust how you count time, either up from zero or down from a specific time. You can also define the default currency symbol, its position, and how you'd like numbers to be formatted and rounded. These settings ensure that your reporting is both neat and understandable. Tracking time on a task is straightforward. From any page of the dashboard, click on the clock icon in the top right. If you have any running tasks, they will be displayed in this menu. Let's now select New Task. Select the client for which you wish to track time, select one or more of their sites, and select the desired bucket. You can choose to count time up or down. Enter the task title and the task description. Finally, click the Start Timer button. You can now dismiss the pop-up modal and continue working in your main WP dashboard. To stop or pause tracking, click on the clock icon again, and then click on the desired task. Then, to pause or stop tracking, click on the respective buttons and confirm. For those who need to review task details, edit, or delete a task, it's all manageable from the logs page. Here, you can get an overview of all task-related information. The ellipsis menu contains an action to continue tracking a task. When a task has been stopped, it will no longer be available in the clock icon menu, but you will still be able to continue tracking that task from here.
In the ellipsis menu, you will also find actions for viewing details and for editing and deleting entries. When editing a task, you will be able to change all relevant information, including title, notes, but you will also be able to manually adjust the time tracked, the money total, and select the payment status of this task so you can easily keep on top of your finances. On the logs page header, filtering tools are available to help you locate tasks by client, bucket, status, and within a specific date range. Additionally, the Time Tracker extension provides widgets for both site overview and client view pages, showing tasks related to sites or clients. And it also adds useful columns to the Manage Sites and Clients table, giving you a snapshot of tasks tracked for these sites and clients. Next up is the API Backups walkthrough. In version 5 of the main WP dashboard, API backups has become a core feature of the dashboard and thus available to everyone for free. And in version 5, we've also added support for cPanel and Plesk. API backups allows you to make backups and restorations directly on your hosting provider via the main WP dashboard. Let's head to the API backup settings and set up a hosting provider. Click the ellipsis menu in the top right, then settings, and then open the API backups page. Currently, we support Cloudways, Gridpane, Vulture, Akamai, DigitalOcean, and since version 5, cPanel and Plesk. More providers are coming, so stay tuned. The instructions for connecting each of the providers are shown on their respective tabs, and it usually entails little more than entering the API key and email address. We have a couple of test sites hosted on Cloudways, so let's set that up. We've previously grabbed our API key from the URL indicated in the instructions here, so now we just have to toggle on the Cloudways API, enter our account email and API key, and click Save Settings. Let's now move to the API Backups page, which is located under Sites. Here we see a list of all of our child sites, and in the column provider we can see which hosting provider is associated with a particular child site. From here you can request backups for an individual site by clicking on the ellipsis menu and then Backup, or you can request backups in bulk by selecting multiple sites and then clicking on the Backup Selected Sites button. Once you successfully request a backup, you will see a notification in the top right corner. To manage backups for a particular site, you again click on the ellipsis menu next to the desired child site and then manage backups. Here, you will see a list of all available backups for this child site. And to restore a backup, simply click the restore icon of a desired backup. To avoid hitting the API rate limits of some providers, we have added a button to refresh the list of available backups manually. So if you are not seeing some recent backups and you expected them to be here, remember to click that button to fetch the most recent list. We hope these walkthroughs have been helpful. If you have any questions or need further assistance, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe for more updates from MainWP.